So over the next few slides, we'll spend a few minutes talking about DNA methylation. And so DNA methylation, in particular CPG dinucleotide methylation, is one of the better studied epigenetic marks. So DNA methylation basically refers to uh, a methyl group being added to either adenine or cytosine. And the addition of DNA methyl groups uh, is typically catalyzed by DNA methyl transferases, or what's written in short form uh, DNMT. And so unlike uh, some histone modifications anyways, uh, DNA methylation is very clearly a uh, epigenetic mark in the true sense of the word, uh, in the sense that basically DNA methylation patterns are typically replicated with high fidelity during uh, DNA replication. And this high fidelity uh, memory is basically achieved through the DNMT1 enzyme. And so in this lecture, we'll mainly focus on specifically CPG dinucleotide methylation. And so CPG dinucleotide methylation basically refers to the methylation of cytosine when you have a uh, cytosine followed by guanine. And so this, uh, we call it CPG dinucleotide methylation to basically distinguish the fact that uh, cytosine obviously base pairs with guanine. Uh, so again, CPG dinucleotide methylation is when you have a C followed by a G on one strand and the C is methylated. And so some interesting facts about CPG dinucleotide methylation are that uh, CPGs are generally pretty rare across the genome. And, the, by, and by rare, I mean based on the uh, GC composition, percent GC composition of the human genome, for example, uh, you'd expect to see a lot more CPGs than you actually do. And part of the reason for this is that when the uh, cytosines are methylated, uh, basically methylated CPGs tend to spontaneously deaminate uh, and basically get converted into TPGs. And so obviously that kind of sequence mutation is uh, not great for your genome in general. And so CPGs in general are, are relatively rare across the genome. Uh, that said, uh, when they do occur, they do tend to be methylated in humans. And so about 75% of CPG dinucleotides at any given time are methylated in the human genome. So one of the common approaches to assaying methylation status of CPG dinucleotides is through a technique called bisulfite sequencing. And so the idea is that when you treat DNA with bisulfite, uh, this basically deaminates cytosines uh, and changes them into uracil in DNA. Uh, the key part here though is that methylation protects this deamination and so methylated cytosines do not get deaminated. Uh, and so basically in bisulfite sequencing, what happens is that you have your uh, genome sequence and presumably you know the sequence ahead of time and so you know where all the cytosines are and CPGs. And so when you treat it with bisulfite, uh, basically all of the cytosines will get, all of the unmethylated cytosines will get converted to uracil. Um, all of the methylated cytosines will stay as cytosines and that will basically get reflected by DNA sequencing. So it's worth pointing out quickly that in some of the long read sequencing technologies we talked about in our previous lecture, don't actually require bisulfide treatment in order to identify certain methylation events. And so, for example, for PAC biosequencing, uh, when DNA polymerase encounters a methylated adenine, uh, incorporation of the corresponding thymine uh, nucleotide will actually take longer than incorporation of a uh, thymine nucleotide for an unmethylated adenine. And so, based on uh, whether or not you see a methylated adenine or not, uh, basically the uh, the timing of the fluorescence events will basically change, which then allow you to identify methylated adenine events. And similarly for nanopore sequencing, uh, recall that for nanopore sequencing, uh, basically we're measuring changes in current as uh, DNA is being unwinded and passed through a nanopore protein. And so basically uh, the change in the current is slightly different for, for example, methylated residues versus unmethylated residues. And so that can be picked up by the base calling sequence uh, and identified as a methylation event. So in humans, DNA methylation serves two primary purposes. Uh, the first of which is to silence uh, large parts of DNA sequence, and the other of which is to regulate gene expression. Uh, 
In terms of silencing uh, different DNA sequences, I mentioned in the review lecture that in the human genome, roughly half of the genome is either repetitive or has uh, its origins in repetitive sequences. And so within those sequences, there's a lot of, for example, like retrotransposons and transposons um, that would be active unless they're silenced. And so a lot of those regions of the genome are methylated, um, which basically shuts down uh, activity of those retrotransposons and transposons. Uh, on the other hand, in terms of gene regulation, uh, DNA methylation plays a pretty critical role at CPG islands. And so CPG islands are clusters of CPG dinucleotides near promoters of a lot of genes. Um, and so typically methylation of those CPG islands leads to uh, repression of gene expression, whereas uh, lack of methylation tends to promote gene expression or at least not inhibit it. Um, also, uh, there's a number of uh, protein domains that recognize uh, methylated CPG dinucleotides and that then interact with the uh, epigenetic machinery in order to uh, also impact gene regulation. And so in terms of CPG islands, uh, again, these are really regions near promoters uh, that are rich in CPG dinucleotides. Um, so more specifically, they're uh, they are near promoters of somewhere between like 40 to 60% of the genes in the human genome. Um, and again, their methylation status is really kind of strongly associated with uh, repression of gene expression. It's worth noting that uh, CPG dinucleotide methylation doesn't just happen in CPG islands. Um, there can be CPG methylation within gene bodies. And actually it turns out that uh, CPG dinucleotide methylation in gene bodies tends to be associated with activity of gene expression, actually. And so this is just to say that CPG dinucleotide, dinucleotide methylation doesn't always associate with repression of gene expression. Um, an important question, actually, is, is basically uh, the question of how do CPG islands uh, keep themselves free of DNA methylation when you want to keep that gene uh, being expressed? And so the answer to that is that um, certain DNA methyltransferases basically will only methylate CPG dinucleotides uh, when they're near histones that uh, don't have any modified H3K4 residues. Right? And so the idea here then is that active promoters are typically associated with H3K4 trimethylation. And so this uh, K4 trimethylation mark basically protects the neighboring CPG islands from uh, methylation because on the uh, uncertain DNA methyltransferases like DNMT3L, uh, some of their protein, protein domains only recognize unmodified H3K4s. And so modification will basically prevent binding of, of those protein domains to, uh, to the DNA methylation. And so it's important to note that although we've talked about uh, histone modifications uh, and DNA methylation separately, these two systems for regulating gene expression actually do interact quite closely. And so, for example, uh, when there's no methylation on CPG dinucleotides, uh, transcription factors like CFP1 can come in and bind to these unmethylated CPGs and basically recruit other factors which uh, basically yield the settlation of nearby histones, which then activate transcription. Uh, and furthermore, binding of TFs like uh, CFP1 to uh, non-methylated CPGs can basically prevent uh, DNA methyltransferases from adding methyl groups to those CPG dinucleotides. And so similarly, there also exists sets of, for example, methyl, methyl binding domains or MBDs. They can uh, bind to and recognize methylated CPGs. And then what happens is these MBDs then recruit uh, other factors like histone deacetylases, which then deacetylate nearby histones and then shut down gene expression at nearby genes. And also similarly, methylated CPGs can block uh, or change uh, TF binding and therefore effectively prevent uh, or reduce the amount of TF binding to those promoters.